Uh, there's also Mulligan phase, so you can redraw three of your cards. Of these ten cards, you get into your starting hand. And in this deck specifically, we would like to this um, card. I mean, we actually already know what we want, what we wouldn't like to have turn one, because some cards are just not very good turn one. So I'm still wondering whether this card is better. It also depends against which hero you play. So this is the Crippler. Mm, usually you don't play against the Crippler, but um, let's just do it like this. Okay, um, so usually in this deck, um, you discard stuff from your deck um, into your graveyard. Exactly, but the hero ability, that might be confusing, yeah? Because um, those are guys who actually get resurrected um, directly into play, so... So you put strong opponents in the graveyard so they get resurrected? Over the crowns. Um, no, it's basically that this guy resurrects himself and the hero ability is that you put stuff into your graveyard and then this resurrects automatically. It doesn't matter. It's a kind of a more complicated ability. Um, and this deck is also already playing with cards which are doing stuff. So she comes into play, she's doing something. So that might look or seem quite confusing what's happening. Look at this, now the roach is done, right? It's not very good. Oh, you can look at the cards that have been, that have died, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which have died and uh, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And is there any way to retrieve cards that have died? We should pass for the way. Um, yes, you can retrieve cards, yeah. So basically the minions that die, they go to your graveyard and then with other cards or with whatever effect you might retrieve some of them. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Okay, that might be worth mentioning. It's also very important to mention that you play with a lot of cards of your deck usually. So you really have a lot of possibility to play with the things you build and every game. So it's not... But you play with your 25 cards. It's still a little bit random, but it's not completely out of the box random. It's not like, oh, sometimes you draw, draw these packages and sometimes you just don't draw them at all and that completely influences the game state or something like this. But you can actually influence the game state a lot. There's still RNG and every game will look different. Mm -hmm. But it's not out of the, out of the box. Out of the box. It's, not out of the, it's not out of the box, yeah. It's not like, okay, this flips and suddenly he has 25 energy <laughs> or he has zero energy. Can you yeah. Can you, before you play a card, like read what's actually written on there? Yes, I will come to that. So that was the thing with the basic stats, right? So every card has like kind of basic stats. And um, now we come to special effects. So you see the basic uh, effects here. Um, you see the base stats here. But they are all doing something additionally, usually. You can also play stuff like Gerald, which is not doing anything. So then there's written no ability, but usually everything is doing at least something and this enriches the game. So I could for example play this guy which adds two strengths to a non-gold unit on our side of the battlefield. And adding two base strengths is usually only relevant for this very current turn, but finally this guy will come again and for the next turn, which means if we add base strength to this dude, that means that he will come again next turn with also two more strengths. Okay. So he keeps the buff. Okay. Yeah, he gives the buff, and hence we want to play this guy the first moment or as soon as possible. Okay. Um, so he won the first round, and um, I, I guess we can just play our stuff. So the, this archer is, for example, immune to weather, which means if there is a weather effect, he won't become affected that much. But Why no, does AOE, right? That would be, uh, that would affect one specific role. Um, we can probably just play this and shoot these three. So this is his ability. Remove one strength from three non-gold units, which means he's addressing the opposition, the opponent's role. So we have with Jen. She is, for example, at the start of every turn, she's removing one strength from the strongest opposing non-gold unit. No, so Oh, she keeps doing that. Every she turn. keeps doing that every turn, exactly, okay. exactly. And she's a golden unit herself. She's a golden unit, okay. but she only has five base stats, five instead of thirteen or twelve. Let's say instead of twelve, because your has twelve, so you sacrifice seven base stats, but for that you get an ability. Okay. I can help you if you wish. Okay, this Armian. And what we discard is definitely Siri. Because Siri has an ability that um, she returns to the hand if we lose the round. 
Um, but we cannot afford to lose any more rounds because we already lost the first one. And if you lose the second one, we will lose the game. And as such, um, we would like to get rid of something else. Are you always allowed to choose with this one? Um, yeah, if, if the card states so. So if this states draw two cards, this card two, yes, then you're allowed to okay, choose. Okay, otherwise it would say. I promise you a quick deal. Yeah, if it would say this card random card, for example. Yeah. So now you want to set up this is Shen. I mean, we have also the Crippler here. And remove three strengths from all weakened opposing units. Okay. So that's the hero ability. Um. So we can probably just. Add more. Oh, I will make also sooner or whatever. So this is good because then Jen only hits one and not too many. Um, there are specific cards, but um, Scorch, for example, is not doing it. And you can also play around cards. So um, you kind of know what cards exist, and then you can set up your play uh, according to that. What is the total amount of cards uh, in the game? Yeah. How much are there? Roughly. Oh, yeah, Okay, sorry. There are a lot of cards, guys. Well, I mean, if you say you know all cards, then. You know the cards which are getting played, and the good thing is, like, I think, like, basically every card is playable. Every card is playable, but you it's also. Not, it's yeah. like, there are not these trash cards you never play. It's like, yeah. I think you can make a deck with every card. Like, they're yeah. all having mechanics which are. Meant to be played. Okay. Um, ah, 250 <laughs> cards. And every two weeks, um, yeah, yeah, thank you, Marty. <laughs> so, um, 250 cards, and every two weeks, 20 new cards are added from what I um, heard. Can, when you scroll over the opponent, can you see what they do as well? Yeah, of course. Okay, so, okay. So there's the big X Men who gets bigger and bigger. X-Men. He's X-Men. What is it? Yeah, what X-Men? Yeah, of course, yeah. So we have this card which just um, remove this stuff. Oh, now he can do this. I am just waiting for the whole board. Yeah, that's why I exploit the Crippler. That was his hero ability or what? Yeah. Yeah, that was stupid because I, I could have just delivered one point turn later. I was... Um, yeah, that was, that was what do you good. need? So, mm. Out with the crowns. Come on, quick now. So now we have to. I don't even know whether that's, that's probably wrong. Uh, so now he passes and. Then he tries what? Oh, nine exits. I pass it. Don't you pester me. Leaving our board every turn. And this grows as he can. No, uh, no, just play the arrow, dude. And we have to play balls. I think. My hand goes fast! I have a bad against him. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Well, no, you don't need to play both. You can just pass it on. Oh, or no. you get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's normal. He's not that good at the game. He's still. Uh... Yeah, sure. So, um, <laughs> no, but that's uh, this okay because um, it shows you how easy you wear, you lose a game. So if you don't pay attention, um, that was kind of a very good um, example as well. Yeah, unlosable. Absolutely unlosable. We had an advantage of five cards or something. But if you mess it up, you get punished, and that's also good that way. Um, so, it's a difficult game, and if you want to play it perfectly, you have to be spot on. Yeah, very spot on. If you want to play it perfectly, you have to recognize what the base stats are. You have to realize in which kind of way they got manipulated. You have to pay attention to what cards are possible and how. And how the cards are, if you you can really run into stuff, which means if you do something badly, <coughs> you can really, really get punished for it. Yeah? And um, that's also good that way, yeah? because you need to focus on if you don't want to become punished. If somebody like wants to start playing the game who like has never played it, should he like pick up a specific class or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> There's like the monster class, which has like not very complicated mechanics. Well, I mean, you want to start with something that kind of you understand what's happening, right? Yeah, the monster. The monster, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. He hates the monster. <laughs> he, he hates it. No, I would just recommend whatever you get, wherever you get cards. So we just realized that 
every class can be played or every class is playable which means whenever it doesn't even matter like the class you get good cards first you just play that that's class. true yeah, yeah. they are all reasonably they are all reasonably playable yeah so it's really really easy basically your daily quests are super rewarding like how many um, kegs do you get a day you get like five kegs a day so you get five kegs a day uh yeah it's like you it's, it's it's the same pricing as in Hearthstone. It's like you would get five packs, and you, the pack the packs are even more valuable because every time you open a keg, there's always one super valuable card, and you can choose between three super valuable cards. You can choose about uh, the cards you want to have, so you get faster decks you want to have. What every card is playable, and what world is can be playable in the world where you also play the other dudes. The <laughs> Yeah, that's very card specific, but um, he is playable in a world where you play. Um, now nah, where is he? Where you play this guy as well, Shalmar. Come me into Shalmar, my friend. Oh, it's also with the GG. It's also pretty cool because um, if you if you BM, I like if your opponent sends you a good game, you will receive scrap. Yeah. So maybe they could even increase its scrap, but you get a small scrap amount, which means if you're behaving badly on the ladder, you don't get GGs. And if you don't get GGs, well, yeah, then you're free to play plan goes downhill. Yeah. And this is the different heroes where you can see what the ability is, yeah? yeah. Every faction has, I think, six different heroes. What is it? Explain that again with the factions. I don't get so that. So we have four factions. Yes. It's like a class. Um, it's not even like a class. It's like there are just four factions. These factions have like basic faction abilities. Yeah. Five, five factions, sorry. Five factions, yeah. And they have basic faction fit, fit, um, abilities. For example, the Skellig faction. Every every turn later, every card gets plus one. Mm -hmm. The uh, monsters get like every, every time the last minion you play mm -hmm. gets resurrected for next turn, and and so on. Yeah, for next faction. So you have basic faction abilities. And between these faction, you also got faction leaders, and these faction leaders also got different abilities again. So every faction has different cards that have the synergy. The faction leaders, which have this different abilities that you can use once again. Yeah. Oh, uh, so that's the faction leaders. Exactly. The heroes, basically. Exactly. Well, every faction has ah, six okay. leaders. So basic, and then there you have the neutral cards, which can be used for every faction. Exactly. Neutral, and you have a specific faction card. That what the leaders do basically, you can use your faction cards in a different way. So yeah. mm -hmm. who would be the skeleton leader? The, there are different skeleton leaders. There's like yeah. The so the monster, you mean? There are three different leaders, and they're all doing uh, other stuff. Yeah. All doing different stuff. Yeah. Everything is an 11 strength minion. The one and the other guy gives the buffs your row. The other guy spawns one weather meta, meta effect or mm -hmm. removes the weather effect. It's like it gives you an insane amount of possible decks perfection you can play. Yeah, oh. yeah. I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the four heroes. Five factions. Well, these five, are five, five, factions. five factions, and yeah. those five factions have three heroes each. I think it's, yeah. it's that yeah. it's so announced. So it's actually fifteen different heroes. Yeah, yeah, but there will be also there will be more. It, yeah. it said uh, there should oh, in the end okay. there should be six leaders perfection. Oh, six leaders. Yeah, this is also what you see. JJ already figured this out. So um, you see it here. I mean, first, I made these uh, spare cards, but um, you see that here. So if you go into a uh, faction, um, yeah. let's take Nilfgaard, then you see the leader is like three out of six. So by the gold cards, yeah, oh, uh, not even the gold cards are done right. No. So bronze is 18 of 18, so they've done all of those. Silver cards, they've done all of those. No, no, clearly not. Clearly. Is that no, no, but there's one missing, so that's ah. fine. So it's not done yet, or you don't, you it's don't not, have it? it? It's not done yet. It's not done yet. So they, uh, they still want to add two gold cards to every faction, as you mm -hmm. see, and three leaders. So that's... Oh, okay. So in the end, you will have five factions with six leaders each, so yeah, 30 yeah. leaders. That's insane. I feel like you have like at yeah. least three different decks. So. But in the three leaders or the six leaders, then perfection has the synergy with that specific faction stuff. Yeah. But still do different stuff. Yeah. yeah it's also okay, interesting. It's also interesting because the cards in itself are also partly depending on the leader. Yeah. So you can, for example, not play um, the the Mangonel, for example, or what would be a good example? Yeah. Mm, 
Yeah, for example, the Magonet is a good example. So this is a six strength thing, which removes two strengths from a random opposing non-gold unit whenever a card is revealed. Is yeah. Yeah, the okay. thing is just, if you don't have card reveals, well, obviously she's not that good. Yeah. Or the Mangonet is not very good. But this class has a leader, and the leader is basically um, revealing... I mean, there are also other revealing cards. But this leader, for example, is also revealing three cards. Yeah. So that means the leader is pretty much unplayable if you don't play also cards like this. Uh, but on the okay. other hand, if you play cards like this, suddenly this leader becomes playable. Or the other way around, some cards are only playable if you play this leader. So deck building is actually a big factor in this game. Oh yeah, deck building is a big factor and it's also a big factor um, uh, with, uh, with, with these cards just that you have cards which are not playable or unplayable if you don't play them in a specific combination. That's really great. So it just means that you cannot just push in the overpowered cards in your deck and then you win the games, but you really really have to be aware of what the factions are doing, what the meta is doing, and what your deck is doing. And this is another thing about net decking. So um, in this game, you get a very distinctive advantage if you know what your opponent is playing, because there are a lot of cards which are doing stuff. And doing stuff means also doing reactive stuff, which means if your opponent is doing a specific thing, a specific card is punishing that. But if your opponent is doing something else, maybe another card is punishing that. Yeah, which means if you know that your opponent is not playing a specific card, mm -hmm. you can absolutely maximize your value because you can then do stuff which lets you win a lot of games. Basically, you know your opponent wouldn't have any AoE, so you can overexpand like crazy. For example. For example. For example, or you know that your <laughs> opponent doesn't play big minions, so you can pass a turn earlier. So okay. let's say you have a 12 advantage on stats and you know that your opponent's deck doesn't play a 13 stat card, you can just pass because you know he cannot overcome that with one card. Is yeah. there like standard decks already? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, you basically... Okay. But these are... I mean, first of all, you also have to play them very well in order to achieve a high win rate. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just say, okay, I take this deck and now I have a high win rate. It doesn't work like this. But you, you will deliberately fail with those decks. Um, if you cannot play them well. But the other thing is, once people know how the deck will look like, they can completely outplay you if they are good players. Mm -hmm. um, if they exactly know what they, what are the things you're playing or what car, what the, um, um, what cards you play. So, yeah, I mean, you will encounter this in my future streams or also in the stream today. Um, we will do gameplay later and um, or even directly uh, following this and um, yeah and then you will also see what we are talking about but this is now rather about the basics so let's take a look at the chat and maybe you also have um, questions yes you can make a good societal deck of course you can make every deck good so um, for societal it's even two classes you can do you can either do dwarves or you can do elves and yeah, with the elves you can, I mean, also take this leader, but you can also take this third leader, which is not displayed at the moment, because we don't have it. Um, but, okay, so, yeah, there are two possible, there are even two poss uh, possible ways to get it going. So either with dwarves, which carry over, or with elves, which buff in the end. Okay, guys, um, maybe last questions? Other than that, I think that's kind of the introduction, or did we, did we miss anything? No? Uh, no. No? Okay. What's that? Now we already... Or maybe, maybe just shortly for the competitive thing. So, you have a leaderboard, so at any point of the... At any point, you can always check your rank. And this is amazing. You can not only check your rank if you're a legend or 1000, you can also check your rank if you are 80,000, 60,000. You exactly see where you are with your MMR globally. Yeah. So you don't have to be able to achieve legend to go for the ranking race. You will already see it. And also in an honest way. Not in a kind of I'm stupidly grinding monkey grind and then I climb some levels and then there are some weird letter resets, whatever, and I don't know at all what's going on. But in a way that you have an MMR and 
you will see whether you become better if your MMR increases and you will see that you get worse if your MMR increases. <laughs> yeah. Ja, doch, doch. Also, so, it's really awesome. It's really awesome. So, um, good. Um, I'm going offline here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if there will be, um, yeah, more questions to come, I will of course also answer them. But I hope this could give, give you a good glimpse into the game and into the game as uh, gameplay. Um, what you will be able to do oh you also get uh, huge rewards at the beginning so you get a lot of um, kegs at the beginning if you rank yourself up in casual mode um, let's say the first 10 levels go really quick and you, you get a very good basic um, card set very quickly um, and you play casual at the beginning so how you begin is you get yourself a better key whether you get it for free or whether you get it for one euro doesn't matter you start the game and you will get into the game very quickly but there's one thing don't give up after one day please because what I realized is that once I started the game it was not even that much fun yeah I just explained it very quickly so I started I started the game yeah. okay. I started the stream uh, I, I, I started this game yeah I started the game and when I played the first day, it was okay-ish, but I was a little bit confused because I was like, oh, I passed once and then I'm not allowed to act this turn any longer, that's weird, and I can somehow not attack with my minions, their minions. I was actually a little bit confused, I was thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit is missing in this game. But then I played the game another day, like the second day. And it got better, better and better, and like with a very stale curve. And what I realized at day three was that the things I was missing were not even that bad. Yeah. So that my minions cannot attack every turn and things like this. I didn't even miss them, but it even got the game kind of better. So what? I, Long story short, what I realized is that I was just missing them because I was used to those things, doing those things. So, monsters being able to attack every turn. I was just used to that from Hearthstone, right? Because I now played like for more than two years Hearthstone. So, it felt like that, uh, it felt like confusing and weird that I couldn't attack with my monsters every turn. Um, so don't let yourself down by these things you will encounter the first three days. Because the first three days a lot of things will maybe seem a little bit unfamiliar mm. but give the give the game uh, a shot for a few days and you will exactly know what i'm talking about so thank you very much for watching yeah and see you around guys um maybe i also just showed things because i also saw some posts on reddit regarding cast on fitting cast and stuff like this yeah so it basically doesn't change that much, just that I now play, I don't know, how do you say, I mean, oh, oh, how I will be involved in Hearthstone. And uh, I don't completely cut it, but I still play the stuff which seems and is very interesting. So stuff like Global Games, ESL Team League, those are interesting things. So I will still continue to play them, but um, I won't continue to play stuff. I mean, very natural, right? I will just stop playing stuff which is not fun I mean why should I play something which is not fun for me yeah so and this is 100% the letter the letter system any grind I mean even the word grind I mean what is this for a game which forces you to grind I mean are you like <laughs> oh I, I run again yeah okay uh, okay yeah, it's, it's completely true I don't know um... yeah okay guys so, um, see you. Uh, what, what's so funny? <laughs> what's so funny? <laughs> Run, coach. No, I, it's, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, well, probably, probably. It's, um, yeah. So, you basically quit the letter completely and you play tournaments and interesting stuff. Yeah. Like to be honest, I'm just mad at myself. To be honest, I'm really mad at myself because uh, it was not fun. It was not fun for more than a year now. 
and I always pushed myself to do it again because I said, okay, maybe it's not fun, but maybe I'm just not trying hard enough. Or yes, it's not fun, but maybe it will change. And yes, it's not fun and, and so on and so on, right? And so just cut 50% out of the runs I do because the most thing is just that I'm probably um, just mad at myself that I did something I didn't enjoy for such a long time and now kind of the regret uh, squeezes in yeah. um, but obviously it's also just my fault that I didn't um, do let's say the transition earlier whereas I still had hope I really had hope and hope and hope and hope and hope yeah and at some point um, you have to, to cut that stuff right so um, the point has come now um, but I mean that being said I mean all those nice things um, um, I mean, there are also a lot of nice memories of Hearthstone. Yeah, so I mean, it's uh, I, I don't want to uh, trash talk that at all. I mean, it's a very beautiful game with a lot of beautiful mechanics. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this, uh, I had a lot of pleasure and interesting times. Mm. Yeah, and blah, blah, I mean, you, you know, uh, for those who watch the stream on a regular basis, they know exactly my transition and um, that it was not all black and white, but nowadays I just feel that it's more black than white. And that's also the reason why I'm, I'm sticking to another game with uh, the majority of my time. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and see you around. Hope you enjoyed this introduction. And uh, if you want to see more, you know where to find me. Um, we are doing now half an hour, one hour of food and coffee break, and then we will be, be back for Gwent High Stakes Action. Yo! <laughs> <laughs>